was a victim of the fourth grade mission tours where I remember being told things that I shouldn't have been told in my mind um, about my ancestors being, you know, quote unquote, civilized by the Spanish and the Spanish building the missions and the whole thing about the faithful, peaceful Indians happy to accept the Spanish culture and the Catholic faith. It wasn't the idea that you see now in uh, a lot of mission literature. And if you go to, for instance, the mission at Carmel, all the smiles of, uh, of, the, of the natives uh, and the portrayal of them as docile and uh, easy to uh, uh, convert to uh, Christianity. Uh, the term savage has been heaped upon Indian people. And I like the term savage because it gives you a little bit of character. But for the most part, uh, the non-Indian communities look upon savage as uh, a ruthless, uh, uh, near animal-like creature. Uh, I look on it as savage, as uh, uh, the noble savage, as the warrior, uh, as the philosopher, uh, as the person or people who don't give up, that they feel that their culture is very important and uh, that they want to keep it forever. They held some organized resistance to some of the policies of the, of the Catholic Church. Some people took up arms and actively fought against the Spanish um, in, a, in a more militaristic sense. Um, rebellions, um, revolts. Uh, the tribal groups were, uh, had a lot of numbers. The Bay Area, for instance, uh, the Ohlone's had large numbers. And the Chumash down by Santa Barbara had seven missions in their homeland area. And uh, at one point, the Chumash organized and resisted uh, uh, both the, the Spanish soldiers and, uh, and the Padres. Uh, and they didn't want to uh, be governed by the church any longer. Uh, even the first mission in San Diego uh, only lasted three years before they destroyed it. They, they didn't want to uh, uh, be forced into subjugation. And so there were leaders who, uh, who mustered up uh, a resistance uh, force against the church. Uh, revolutionaries in my mind, like Stanislao and Toy Perinha, who um, actively fought against the Spanish. Uh, like on one day, there would be a resistance at three or four different locations, and it was all uh, synchronized so that uh, uh, the, the clergy and the, and the troops didn't know what was going on, that it was more than just an uprising of one group in one mission. And some people worked inside of the system itself to, to resist. Um, incorporating their art into the mission walls, practicing traditional beliefs um, when the Spanish weren't looking, refusing to give up their names, refusing to give up their religion, dancing in front of the mission. So you have working inside of the system and you have working outside of the system. So these two different fronts that come together, both sides are important. As oppressed people, as we know this in any culture in the world, when oppressed, people take their traditional items, their traditional ways, their traditional rituals, underground and you protect them they're secret now and you share them privately in the house but not in public and then when the time of liberation comes it all comes back and that's what i believe as we have our oral tradition we know the dance rituals we know some of the prayers we know an understanding through our stories of creation of all the creatures that were involved the native peoples, the religion, spirituality continue today because people kept it with them. They never let it go.